Good evening, cult members, and welcome to Pop Culture Cult. I'm Sean. I'm Janice. And welcome to our spoiler reaction review of episode eight of WandaVision. This one is called Previously on da, 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 WandaVision. And, and it was. It was, yeah. I mean, it was all full of things that have already happened, but happened where we didn't see them. Oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, I, right before we started recording, I said, I have a lot to say about this episode. Part of what I have to say is the balls on Kevin Feige <laughs> and Marvel to do an origin story of a story that we already know yeah. in the next to last episode of a show that's been killing it all over the internet and the world is cray cray. Yes. But, I mean, it satisfies that. You know, I, Wanda and Pietro were just kind of thrown into yeah. Age of Ultron, and we have gotten the story bits here and there. Right, we right. knew about the bomb not exploding, but, you know, when you see it, you're like, you know, her parents, like, were good died people. right there, and you know? Good and parents. Yeah. And, yeah. like, and the, her doing this episodic thing to deal with grief was all laid out by her dad who was trying to sell VHS tapes yeah, on the street. D no, they were deep. Well, the ones, the Dick Van Dyke ones were DVDs. Yeah. Were but DVD. I, yeah. The ones that came out of the suitcase looked like VHS, but VHS, I, I, yeah, but Old I was movies and you know, they were probably bootleg, bootleg copies, copies and you know, I was more looking to... at what they all were. Yeah. Than I was what they actually like physically were, yeah. and, like Malcolm in the Middle and Bewitched and and all and Brady Bunch and like so yeah. so like all the episodes that we've been having have an origin in this suitcase. Yeah, which was the last thing that she kind of saw of her dad, and yeah. then her special collection was the Dick Van Dyke show. So that makes sense why it kind of starts, um, and the episode. Um, something so it's. It's. I looked it up. It's season two, episode twenty of the Dick Van Dyke Show, and it's uh, it's called. Um, These look like walnuts. It was something about walnuts. It's something like that. And let I there up, be walnuts. Something yeah, like that. And it's uh, the episode is about Dick Van Dyke. Um, think it's like a sci-fi episode, and he thinks his thumbs are not real and his and the walnuts are trying to like take them and what it what it is though is it's it's a dream episode it's a dream dream sequence episode which they mention after the bomb lands in their 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 room at their apartment their apartment yeah. and they're hiding underneath the the bed watching oh right the and wanda and, says it's a dream it's, we'll just wake up and it won't be real right and that's the and and that was something that was said by dick van dyke in the episode i was watching what was on oh. the tv and not necessarily i was watching what was on our tv but also the tv within the tv malkovich malkovich <laughs> malkovich um but i just you do to do the backstory for wanda in these in this like going down the rabbit hole idea you get the backstory for agatha, agatha harkness yep which this... was pretty much right out of the comics right yes she... she's much older in the comics but it's right but, but she like is um she betrays her coven and yeah. they and they burn at the stake kill her. And, yeah and, and, yeah like you know, they tried to kill her at the stake yeah. or whatever but so like i liked how they started the episode with telling agatha's backstory of who she like how the how how she got her powers right and and she's not necessarily a bad person in the comics right she's not necessarily a good person either it right. just depends on but and you kind of got that throughout this episode she yeah. starts off you know you're thinking she's a complete bad person but you know she could have killed wanda immediately and but she is kind of trying to help her see why yeah you know why this stuff has happened and for her agatha to see so that she can maybe 
emulate her, get her powers, she, whatever. She comes across as she's trying to get her powers. Yeah. At the beginning of the episode, when she actually, when they actually have their confrontation in the dungeon underneath the house. Right. And and so it feels like Agatha's trying to. She recognizes that Wanda is more powerful than she is. Yeah. And 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 she's worked for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years to be this super powerful witch. Right. And Wanda like shows up on a Tuesday with more power than her. <laughs> right. And and so she kinda comes across as the as the jealous understudy. Yeah. Kind of feel. Yeah. yeah. And that's how it starts. And then as we go along and you go through each new door to kind of get the backstory of how Wanda got her powers as you go through each door it, she becomes more and more sympathetic as we go along. Yeah. yeah. Until the end. Until the end. Where she's holding Billy and Tommy by yeah. by magic nooses. Right. And so stuff. you kind of get the whole, she's a, a villain, she's kind of neutral or maybe more on Wanda's side, and then back to she's yeah. a villain again. She's so. kind of Wanda's therapist in this episode. Yes. Yeah. And I like how they... Uh, they you know the the doors or whatever so that you it was a catalyst for us to go back and see yeah, yeah. how all of that happened and kind of how um wanda got her powers because again we see her and pietro in cells you know right. playing he's zipping around the cell cell and she's like playing with her powers but you never you never see get how, how how she got there. Got there, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that was it was interesting because you got the story of of her her parents dying. You get the story of the the um uh, uh her getting her powers, and then you get the story of her and Vision. I won't say necessarily falling in love, but obviously being there for each other. After everything happens, right, and, and they're at the, the Avengers the, facility, the blooming of their love, the blooming of their relationship, <laughs> their, yeah, is I think that that scene's just as just as important as the Dick Van Dyke episode, and that is it, it. Like I said, it's the balls on them to go back and tell this story, yeah, and and what Vision says in that in that thing about grief. The whole conversation is about grief with yeah. Vision and Wanda, yeah, because she's trying to deal with it's obviously pretty quickly after pietro yeah. died and she's trying to deal with that and and just can't and you know him coming in and talking to i love how he comes in through the wall because you got right. that <laughs> right. in uh was it civil war uh i think it's civil war yeah where where she's like vision we talked about this yeah use the door well, i assume that because the door was open, I could just, <laughs> just come in through the wall. Yeah. But yeah, and and again, that's a story that we never got, right? Just all of a sudden, um, she's in the Avengers facility. Er, facility, the facility yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and he's there with her, kind of, you know, well, He's kind of babysitting her. Yeah, but... and, and and we get that in the movie yeah, that she's like, yeah. I'm just going to pop out for, you know, paprika. And right. And he's like, mm, and then... You can't leave the facility yeah, because but I'm... Yeah, but we don't get the how she got there or how she dealt with Pietro's death. And so that was another one where you get, again, previously on, you get right. the, the in-between story. Which I think adds to... Um, one of the things I'm really, really appreciating about the Star Wars books, I'm going to tie it into Star Wars. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, one of the things I've been appreciating about the Star Wars books is that a lot of the modern canon um, fill in a lot of the blanks for the movies. Yeah. Which is why I love the movies so much is because I know I know these blanks are filled in differently than in the books. You right. Know, added on to by the books. Right. This is a book in visual form filling in those blanks yeah. for those yeah. that part of that story. Because which is what the – I mean that's absolutely something you can use these TV shows yep. or miniseries or whatever yep. you want to call it for. Yep. To fill in the – the gaps and especially for something like this and something for uh, like Falcon and Winter Soldier um, because this is kind of the gap between phase three and phase four right and the uh, original Avengers and working our way forward into the new 
crop of whatever it's going to be going forward and right. stuff. And so it's nice to have this kind of, uh, it's not an epilogue and it's not a prelude, but it's kind of both. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're allowing, you're, you're laying groundwork for what's going to go forward. Right. But you're also filling in some gaps from yeah, the previous yeah. one. I kind of feel like this is what they were trying to do with agents of shield. Um, but the, just the logistics and the, and the fact that licensing Jeff, and the fact that with... Jeff Loeb and Kevin Feige would never talk to each other right. it just made right. it like. But they, yeah, in the beginning at least they, you know, can't we just call Iron Man or whatever? Yeah. But you never, other than Col Coulson was the connective tissue between right. the Avengers, you know, the the movies and the TV show, right. and that was right. and that was it. So um, there's there's discussions. Uh, nothing official, but the discussions that some of the characters from Agents of the Shield could show up in future fill in the blank MCU yeah. stuff. Yeah, like it, and why I, not? I, as they kind of pull all that stuff back into yeah, yeah. the Quake is like the big one that everybody wants to see come in. Yeah, uh, and Coulson, uh, is, you know what what happens with Coulson in the show? I don't know how they bring him back, but he was dead and went to Tahiti. So. <laughs> So he can just go to Tahiti again. And to go to Tahiti again. Um, so let's talk about the um, the the vision, the vision uh, that Wanda has when she sees the Mind Stone. Okay. So she, when she was in the Hydra facility, she goes. Um, she's a volunteer. Um, I love Agnes, Ag Agatha's um, line: "Your parents die, and so you go." join a yeah. anti established anti government radical yeah. terrorist, terrorist yeah. organization or whatever <laughs> and she's like i was trying to change the world um <laughs> which was just like a perfect like little like just dig but also like which explains their switch so fast in age of ultron too yeah like, well yeah she you know she was probably in a bad place and they i mean hydra that's that's what any of those uh, yep. organizations do is they make what their agenda is sound, you know, altruistic when actually it's like militant, and militant. It's, yeah, it's yeah. terrorist. Um, she goes in the room and uh, the Loki staff with the mind stone is in there. It comes off the staff or whatever and comes to her and it explodes the blue crystal that's on the outside and and well explodes it's more visual it, it, it exploding anyways we get the mind stone and wanda and she freaks out but while uh, she's laying there looking up at the mind stone the scarlet witch the the one that we know from the comics with the big horns right, and everything right, like that right that version angels itself in yeah. towards her yeah. and then she, and then they and then she wakes up yeah so it's almost like now we know that Scarlet Witch is a Nexus be being who is this? She is the same in all dimensions, right? And so, with the concept of she is the same in all dimensions, and this opens up where we've been talking about the multiverse a lot. I'm wondering if if I'm wondering if that's kind of lying visual groundwork of another Sc Scarlet Witch from another dimension. Putting her essence into her, to, like I, 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 I don't know how to work it out yet because we're still trying to react from the right. The so yeah, I mean, she, you know, could be, um, not necessarily the same person in all dimensions, but the, the being or the essence or whatever right. is the same, and comes to, yes, di these people in these different. So they all have the same powers yes um but on the outside look you know they Maybe got a different a wrapping different, or, yeah, yeah. different wrapping and stuff yeah. like that but i just i just thought that was a very interesting like visual storytelling point yeah of of that's how she got her powers and then and then agatha later says um you were able like your interaction with the infinity stone um allowed something inside you to awaken that would have died on the vine, mm -hmm. which yeah. is code for the mutant gene. Right. You were already a mutant and yeah. And then 
the infinite or the uh, and then in in Earth six one six this this mention that that gene hasn't been activated yet and yeah. and now you've dealt with the infinity stones and now it's been activated right I'm telling you she's gonna blow up uh, because um, we get um, her going to sword after her coming back and them defeating Thanos and her arguing with the security guard you're a mm, fucking it, it, Avenger, just walk through the door. How do you not have a god key to get in the but building? But she's, I mean, so this whole scene um, really fills in the gap that we have been talking about for a while in that what happened in the two weeks right. between Tony's funeral and when she goes in. Now, what happened is not what we saw. Right. Um, right. But she still, you know, she she gets a little angry and sh and and sees him and right, then right. you know creates this thing um but yeah we were trying to figure out what the catalyst was to to make her go from there to to taking over this whole town and it wasn't it was grief first of all right. but it wasn't um her necessarily seeing them tearing him apart um it that was, made her angry, which was kind of what we saw in the doctor's right. video. I thought for a long time that that wasn't actually her walking through the facility because her cadence is different. Yeah, well, and and, it, and she's in the Scarlet Witch outfit. outfit. Yeah, and when and then in this episode, she's there in a like a red long coat, right? Like a sweater, long sweater, yeah. or whatever. So she's not she goes in there and she's not angry she's sad she frustrated finds, well but not in the beginning i mean right. she's not really frustrated she's just she's sad and she's like uh, you guys i know you have his body because she doesn't even know for sure when she first walks in the door she's just put two and two and two and two together yeah, yeah. and she's like this is probably where he is she's been gone for five years yeah you know so yeah. she doesn't know for sure and you know, so she's pretty calm. She's like, just show me his body. Yeah, just give I just me want his to bury him. Back. I just want to bury him. Yeah. So she's not going in there guns a blazing because yeah. you know she's she's just trying to get his body back. And then I don't know that she ever really gets guns a blazing. I mean, she gets a little pissed off because they won't let her down there. Yeah, and so then she's just like, you know, I'm just gonna blast my way through and go down there yeah and th that whole sequence too where she's in hayward's office watching them dismantle vision um that whole scene is all about hayward baitner yeah yeah it's absolutely. all about hayward baitner yeah uh talking about being alone and and you can't take him he's three billion dollars in vibranium yeah. and like he's an object and not a thing and he actually even corrected himself with saying powering him back up and he stopped himself and then came back and said uh bringing him back to life yeah like like yeah. planting that seed yeah. in there hayward is somebody yeah he is he is not hayward he is hydra he's mephisto he's the grim reaper he's, he's somebody scroll. huh what he's a scroll he's a scroll like i mean i think the scrolls are actually the ones that brought monica the rv thing in the last episode i think those are the scrolls yeah okay I, that's, that's, yeah i honestly think he is either directly working for mephisto or is manipulated by mephisto yeah. or he is mephisto yeah like, like because they're making a point of trying to show the distrust with super powered people yeah and they're not being there they've talked about multiple times with sword yeah. specifically hayward and he's trying to reanimate vision or re whatever vision yeah. to get him to actually be um a, a weapon for sword yeah. against superpowered people yeah especially somebody superpowered like wanda yeah because except... wanda is so much stronger than everybody yes yeah, that's it's not gonna although just the fact that he looks like vision might be enough to stop her from you know, blowing him up right, or whatever, right. because she would 
see his face. We'll get, and we'll get wanna... to that last, the the second post credit scene we have at the season. Um, when she leaves the facility. Um, she does not leave with his body. She does not leave with his body. She went over and put her hand over his head and, and she's crying. And she all she says is, I can't feel you. Right. Which is something that they said in, in, in Infinity War is Vision saying, all I feel is you. Yeah. And so it's kind of a, you know, their connection because they're both it, directly connected to the Mind Stone. Yeah. And I think it helps her to, it, it's just a thing now. It's not him. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is why she doesn't get all pissed off and yeah. start, she gets sad. She gets sad and she leaves. And, and she understands that he's gone, gone. Yeah. And, and what is laying there isn't vision anymore. Right. It's, it's just parts. It's just parts. Yeah. And, and we we as a as a couple view life that way too yeah the person that we are is not the vessel that we're in it's right. the, it's the other stuff and right so like that was like the most like touch the closest to base for me yeah that we like with the dealing with grief is you're no longer here i needed to prove that you're no longer here yeah, yeah. and you're gone and yeah. her leaving without the body was her letting that go yeah and she goes out to the parking lot and gets in the only red car in the parking lot <laughs> um she red cadillac by the way uh buick was it a buick it was a buick, I it was yep. Cadillac. Yep. It was a buick. because all the marvel movies are cadillacs audis too are they so, all right never mind tony drives I don't know what all I'm the audis and he's got the oh that's right tony yeah. does have he has my audi yeah um <laughs> It's in the parking lot. Uh, <laughs> she drives to Westview after going to see Vision's body. Yeah. And she, as she drives through Westview, we get to see Herb and the delivery guy and yep. and everybody as we go through the, the town. We don't see Dottie. We don't see Agatha. Right. Uh, as we go through there. I still think Dottie is somebody. Um, and she pulls into um, it, it, down the street that looks like the house that it, she's been in on the show. And, uh, but she pulls into a par the driveway parking lot, the driveway of an empty lot. There's foundation and that's it. And a lot of weeds and a lot and of stuff. weeds. Cause it's obviously nothing has been done for, for more than five, five years. years. Yeah. And she walks into where the foundation is and she opens it up and it's a deed for the land and the house. And it has a heart on it, and it says a place for us to grow old, V. Yep. So they were building a house to build a future. Right. And that's the catalyst for her to right. explode in grief. Right. She just can't she, with, never, the, uh, with the grief anymore. Right. She just can't. And, and so she doesn't she have just... anybody to go to. Right. Like her go-to to deal with grief with Pietro was Vision. Right. And now Vision is gone. Right. And she explodes out and builds the house. And then there's a pause, like she takes a breath, and it explodes again, and it explodes all throughout Westview, right? And turns into the Bewitch episode, which is where we began. No, there's the a, Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke show. Sorry, Dick Van Dyke show. And then there's a pause, and then she explodes again and manifests vision. Right. So it is not his parts. It is a. It's like the walls of the house. Yes. It, it yes. doesn't actually exist. So so some questions I have right now. I'm I, I'm trusting what they're doing. So I'm not going to be upset with anything that's going on. Uh, my question is, um, because we've known in previous episodes that inside the hex, Wanda is changing the structure of things to fulfill her dream sequence that this is. Right. She manifested the house right and she manifested vision right we also had hayward saying uh tracking him tracking vision and the decaying vibranium inside the hex before right. she expands so does when she manifests vision does she manifest something because she has part of the vibranium with her or in her right or whatever and and we get the the opening of the episode of uh, of the opening episode of them being in the Dick right, Van Dyke show. Right, the very and first so, episode, yeah. And, and, and the comment of let's stay in and the changing back to black and white, like mm -hmm. the opposite of what we had from the, from the uh, was it the Bewitched episode that 
the color change. I think it was the second episode where the color changed at the mm-hmm. end. Yeah. And so it was like the reverse of that. It was like, but I just, the, I have questions about like how she created all this. Stuff. Right. Yeah. As soon as I figured out that vision wasn't, he, they, she didn't take his parts like we had thought and kind of put him back together using those the first thing I thought of was, well, how is Hayward tracking him? Because yeah. he said yeah. he was tracking him. And so we assumed he put a tracker or in, something in the body. Into, yeah. into the body yeah. and then baited her to steal him. Yeah. But that's not exactly what happened. So, yeah, I'm wondering. And, like, maybe he put somebody else in there. But he I specifically it's... says it's Vision. I, I wonder if tracking. they put... A piece of him, a, 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 a vibranium tracking device, something that's going to, to, to. Maybe they planted it like in the foundation. Of planted the, it in they the foundation knew, like she knew was going to go. if he could get yeah. her going. If, if he is Mephisto and has been trying to get her to do this. Right. You have to set up all this stuff going for like, like months in advance right. right so if he put a piece in the foundation of the house she's got to use matter to, to make, matter make matter or make right. her vision right. or her, well <laughs> pun intended and she's ha- and he and hayward has had five years to think about this yeah so if you if you kind of look at it that way then yeah there's he's he's kind of baron zemo where he's had all of this time yeah. to work out to every little mo- minutia yep. of the plan yep. to lay all this out there. Now he may not necessarily know that she's going to be able to manifest new things out of something that's already existing, but he might have an idea of it. Yeah. Especially if he's had five years through kind of study the records of what. Yeah. I kind of feel like maybe he did know that this was what was going to happen. But he didn't know she was going to be able to make it bigger. Right. Right. So right. when all that happened, that was kind of a surprise for him. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, the, he he very much comes across this Palpatine with Palpatine has a plan, but can improv because he's thought of all the angles. Right. And, and so I, I very much feel like he's got, and I got that bad guy kind of feel to him where yeah. he's got a one big plan. This is the plan. If something happens... If A happens, now we're on the A arc. If that doesn't yeah. happen, we're on the B arc. Yeah. We're on that arc. We're on yeah. So, so that that kind of thing. Um, we get um, uh, Wanda um, ends the Wanda ends an episode. Uh, I think it's the Brady Bunch episode, and the lights are all pointing on her and stuff. And um, it's actually the it's it's. Wanda and Vision are sitting on the couch, black and white, and they right. kind of pa- pan open. And Wanda, in color, the modern Wanda, is standing behind them because she's been interact not interacting, sometimes interacting with these no, episodes. That was still the Dick Van Dyke show. That was that, that was still the Dick Van Dyke yeah. show, but the the modern Wanda was watching yeah. them yeah. like the previously on kind of thing. Right. But then they pan back, and they're looking at all the studio lights. Right. And the studio is empty, but all the studio lights are on. The cameras are on looking at this, the set and you hear a clap and it's Agatha and she. Yeah. And leaves. And you start hearing Billy and Tommy crying. Wanda goes out and Billy and Tommy are, are in the street being held by essentially magic nooses. Right. And Agatha says, you are, you are the magic you have is chaotic is chaos magic and you you cannot control it um you are the scarlet witch yep roll credits <laughs> and i it's that's the first time in all of the mcu that they've actually used the name scarlet yep. witch yeah well because maybe she wasn't quite there yet but now she is she wasn't and i'm also wondering if that was some kind of contract with maybe you know kind of thing maybe yeah you know, they, they didn't have the rights to it or whatever and right so, but but yeah they they officially call her scarlet witch right. at the end of this episode right but she's i mean her power i think well i don't know that her powers are getting stronger but that she is realizing more and more and more um 
how to control them. I mean, yeah. that's that's obvious in the beginning of Civil War when she takes out like half of a business building, right? Yeah, because yeah. she she's not she is so strong and not sure how quite to control it. And so I think this is a progression of of her learning what she can do and um, from civil war to infinity war i think at the most it's only in the timeline of the show of the of the show it is a show uh, <laughs> of the timeline of the mcu i think it's only two years from yeah. from yeah. from what happens and from infinity and then another war, five years from civil war to ultron it's it's less than a year yeah and so uh it, so there's it, it, she hasn't had a ton of time to realize a what her powers are yeah and b how strong she really is and right. then she's vaporized for five years right so, so she comes still... back and two weeks later has this emotional meltdown right. that kind of shows her what her what your true power are. is right yeah and and so now I think that's why Agatha has the she has earned the right now to be called the Scarlet Witch yeah. because she's kind of full force using her. She's on, she is full on the Scarlet Witch. Yes. Like I like that. Yeah. Uh, we get a post credit scene this episode. It's Hayward um, and Sword outside the hex, um, saying the weapon is ready. Hayward says, "I guess uh, we've been trying. We've assembled and disassembled this weapon so many times. Uh, I guess we just needed." Um, power from the correct source yeah and they pan over to the drone that was still glowing red that wanda shot down and then they follow the the system into a tank and it's it's gray vision it's right it's vision from west coast avengers it's it, the rumor the tea leaves all of the signs have been we're going towards west coast adventures yeah. and this all but confirms that right like we already kind of knew with timmy and bobby and what they're doing with um with um the hawkeye series with kate bishop and you got stature and 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 right. ant-man stuff and so right. uh we needed gray vision right and now gray vision who is essentially just the android version of vision right with no soul, soul. and right. everything because that's gone He's going to go into the hex. Right. I think that, that and, and back to what we were talking about earlier with Hayward, like, I feel like he's trying to use Vision as a drone to take out right. superpowers. Because, again, she can't, he's betting that she won't be able to take him down. Right. Because he looks like Vision, right? But then she's going to have to deal with the fact that, because make-believe vision <laughs> is still running around in there right right and and that vision that vision that version of vision um that vision of vision um is self-aware right even though he's just i don't know he's a manifestation dust. of uh, he's a <laughs> manifestation of whatever wanda of her imagination brought, yeah brought I, but because he, yeah and he, he in the last episode with darcy like explain to him everything that right. happened, so right. he is aware of who he and actually Wanda doesn't is. know that that's happened. Right. So he is independently, he is an independent entity now, right? Within the the hex, right? And I, I, I'm really interested because I know in the trailer we get now it's Marvel and they've misled us before, but in the trailer they give us uh, a conversation between wanda and vision about the concept of our utopia is under our city is under attack right let's go defend it and them flying through the air through through right through the town so they're gonna go again probably gray vision gray vision yeah. yeah yeah but i mean if they're gonna do the west coast avengers somehow he has to flip right because or they have to gain control of him right right because he's a good guy you know the west right. coast and timmy and bobby can't die which well, has been everybody's like oh. right well it that, that so 
in the House of M comic, they die. Right. They're, but, they but, but they're but, part of the West Coast Avengers. They are part of the so West Coast Avengers. So if they're going to do that, then they can't, because there's a, Agatha can't kill them. Agatha can't kill them. Um, my thought has always been that somebody's got to kill the boys, and that's we've talked about this in the previous. That somebody kills the boys, she can't deal with any any of it anymore. She does that explosion of grief thing again, right? And it encompasses the whole world and right. activates the mutant gene. That's right. been my my thing that I've been going with, um, and everybody else has been saying it's the multiverse, which also could be true too. Like I'm not I'm not yeah. going to be upset with yeah. the with with if she does that and opens the wormhole that we see with the mind stone kind of thing, you know, like that, that concept. But I think at some point in time, the boys have to die and there's only one episode left. Yeah. So that might be the beginning of the episode. I don't think they will. I, and it's really, you know, it's, it's comics. So there's nobody who's ever really dead in the comics. So they, they're killed off in the comics. That's how we get the house of M no more mutants. All that whole story arc right. happens. And then the next arc that happens in the comic is the only person that remembers is Hawkeye because he was dead. He was like, right. he was actually dead when the whole thing happened. Right. But he's, and then he's, dead. He, when, when she, when she rewrites the world, Hawkeye comes back. But see, they've already set the precedence of her making the hex bigger. Right. Not because of grief. Because she was angry because it was being attacked. Because it was being attacked and Vision was tr Vision was in trouble. Right. But she's they've already laid that out there. So yeah. she could it that could be the catalyst for her making it bigger. Yeah. Not um not grief. Not the boys dying. Yeah. I it just I the 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 amazing I think we've had enough Wanda has had enough death. Can we just can, Right. Can right. she just <laughs> have something and the boys, nice and the boys are self-aware too yeah and so yeah. that's, that's yeah another and she thing was too. not pregnant because right and they and multiple times in the show she uh, the boys have done things independent from wanda yeah and they've questioned her and too. questioned her yeah. and, and did stuff. Yeah. uh with this show as much as i love it I love the show and I love the conversation that we have every week and, and everybody breaking it down and having and everybody's different views and like whatever. And, yeah. Um, uh, every new episode has been, we answer three questions. We give you 10. <laughs> yes. We answer five questions. We give you seven. <laughs> we answer four questions. We give you 12. Like it, every episode as we've gone along has been like that. Yeah. Well, we get to episode eight there's only nine, by the way. So we get to episode eight. They don't have to answer everything. They They've don't got have movies to answer, and shows. They don't have in. to answer anything. But if this truly is the catalyst for Doctor Strange and and uh, Spider Man, they have to answer something. Well, yeah, but they don't have to answer everything. I, they do that all the time. Yeah, yeah. With their yeah, uh, yeah. Post post credit scenes, you know, you get this. Wait, what? Yeah. And then you have to wait two years or eighteen months for the next movie yeah. to come out. Yeah, and so, that, and that's been one of the things that I've really actually enjoyed with the MCU is 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 it's it's been a twenty three episode. It's been a twenty one episode with a two part finale and an epilogue. Um, <laughs> uh, series. Yeah. And, but and that's what's cool about it. Like, I think we've talked about this before. Our experience when we went to see Black Panther for the first time, it was a a free um, we thing that we, we here got here into, Arizona. and um, and just the audience. You know, it was there was uh, a lot of black folk in there, and they were super getting into it and dressing up and everything. And that's been marvel right you can be whatever you can be from wherever you can be whatever you could be a businessman yeah. you could be a millionaire you can be you know uh you know poor you could be rich you could be whatever we've all followed the same journey we've all had yeah. experienced yeah. the same thing and that's what's yeah. cool about and it and it's starting to continue because as we sit right now um back to the conversation we were having earlier about this is the the prelude epilogue whatever thing we have black widow still in may 
And then we get Shang Chi in yep. June, yep. which is apparently done or they're editing. I mean, they've been, they've been done filming for a yeah. while. Yeah. And then we still have Eternals. Oh, by the way, Eternals is sitting out there. Yeah. And nobody's talking about Eternals at all. And then they announced Spider Man today, No mm-hmm. Way Home. Again, we're talking about the multiverse. You know, like so. So you've got this in between period in of huh in Puerto Rico and and Puerto Rico. We're getting morals, 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 morals. Um, who did they cast? Okay, we're now we're in the speculation of Spider Man. Um, <laughs> We've gone for forty minutes. <laughs> uh, that's uh, and I, and I still think we haven't covered everything. But yeah, I, no. but the idea of what they've done in Wandavision is, I feel amazing television and i don't know if it's one of my favorite shows of all time we still have another episode left and maybe another one after that uh there's a rumors of a 10th hidden episode um wouldn't put it past them but i wouldn't put it past them either uh but um what they've been able to do it's it's been one of my favorite shows and i think because of the week-to-week structure and the idea of doing an homage to sitcom television yeah. has actually really added to that. Yeah. And I'm interested to see what happens with Falcon and Winter Soldier because that's essentially just a six hour movie broken up into six episodes. Yeah. Yeah. And so Yeah, and I'm liking the the week to week. I mean, as much as I like to just binge stuff and we kinda bitch like when Mandalorian we're like, uh, we gotta wait a whole week. But as uh an article I read that People need to learn how to watch week to week television again, again yeah. because we've all just been spoiled to get everything dropped at once and and it's over as soon as you're done. Yeah. You know, if you can watch it all in a day, it's over. And this is like every Friday we're like, Oh, what's yeah. what's the next we're, episode? We're gonna rush gonna and be? get our workout done and go get food and then <laughs> sit down and watch one division and then talk about it for forty five minutes. Uh on the internet. Uh so let us know what you thought of this episode and our reaction to it in the comments down below. Please be nice. That is a requirement around there around here, around there, around, around all there. the places. Oh. Around the world, <laughs> around the world. Um uh, and let us know what you think is going to happen with Grey Vision and how that's going to affect Wanda in, in the hex and stuff. So let us know in the comments down below. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, and follow us on all the social media stuff, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. <sighs> One more. <laughs> or maybe two. <laughs> and until the next time, cult members, good afternoon, good evening, and good night now.